Hey muchachos and muchachas, good to be back with you. Welcome to the first video of the new year, 2020. Um, I had no idea uh, all those years ago when I started this channel that I would still be doing this. And here we are with almost 7 million views. So thank you very much for, your, for watching. Uh, hope you keep watching and spread the word. So that out of the way, let's talk about something new. Let's talk about free body diagrams. Now, if you've taken a statics class or you're taking a statics class now, uh, free body diagrams are going to be a big, big part of it. And it's one of the, 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 the primary ideas in the class, actually. So what is a free body diagram? It sounds very technical. Hmm? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. You're going to take a body, a structural element, and you're going to cut it free of the structure around it. And you're going to do it in a way that lets you calculate the loads on that body. So a free body diagram is just exactly what it sounds like. It's a body that's free of other uh, structural elements. Now the influence of those structural elements is replaced by forces, the interface forces between them. Hmm, still sounds pretty technical. Let's try one, okay? So when somebody says, I'm going to do a structural analysis, what does that mean? Well, it means that that person is going to look at a structure, and a structure could be anything. The building I'm in, what's holding it up is a structure. An airplane wing is a structure. A crane is a structure. The frame of a bicycle is a structure. So lots and lots of things could be a structure. We call them all structures so we can treat them the same way. Here's a structure. Let's say there's a diving board. Now, if you've ever been on a diving board or seen one, they've got a basically a pin at the back, and it really is a pin. It really is a metal hinge back there. And there's another support up here. And the last one uh, I saw, you could actually move this, this, this lower support back and forth to change the stiffness of the diving board. Well, let's say there's somebody standing on the board. Now remember, this is statics, not dynamics. So we're assuming that person, I don't know, maybe a middle-aged professor, is standing there, just standing. If they're jumping, they're doing things like that, that's dynamics, different class. We're in the statics world right now, so let's just say that person is standing there. Let's do a structural analysis of the diving board. What does that mean? Well, in terms of statics, what it means is let's figure out what the loads acting on the diving board are. We know what this is if we know how much the uh, 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 professor weighs. Well, what are those? Well, we're going to need some information. We're going to need some dimensions and some weights. Well, this, this uh, professor is maybe not as light as he might have been earlier in his life, so let's call it about 95 kilograms. And we need some dimensions. Well, how long is a diving board? Four meters? That doesn't sound long enough. How about six meters? That sounds like a pretty long diving board. Five meters. This will be a five meter diving board. Now, yeah, I'm making that up, that up that number. It's pretty close to right. If it's not right, if you think I'm, I'm, I've, I've mischaracterized the length of it, we'll fix it. You'll know how to do this. You can fix it. And let's say this is two meters there. That, this is about right. That's about, you know, that's, that's about how much a middle-aged professor weighs, and that's about how big a diving board is. So this is close enough. So we're going to draw a free body diagram of something. Now the thing you draw the free body diagram of, if I can end a sentence with a preposition, is, that, is the thing you want to analyze. It's the, it's the thing about which you want to know the forces. Well, do I want to know the forces generated by, you know, down into the ground here? Nah, in this case, no. I want to know what forces are acting on the board. So this is what we would call a working diagram. A working diagram has all the information you need to start the problem. So it's got things like dimensions, and you know what the boundary conditions look like, and you know what the loads are. That's a working diagram. In, in class, the working diagram is often in the book. It's often given to you as part of the problem statement. So in school, you normally have the working diagram presented to you in uh, the, your professional life outside of school, you got to draw this. In fact, if you can't draw this, you better not go to a free body diagram. So let's turn this into a free body diagram. Well, free body diagrams, number one, don't have dimensions on them. And number two, they don't have this on them. 
they are free. I'm cutting them free of their supporting structure. So whatever's under here, I don't care. It's probably some kind of concrete or metal uh, foundation or support or something for this thing. Well, I don't care what that is. So I'm going to get rid of that. I only care about it to the extent that it affects the structure I'm analyzing. So let's turn this into a free body diagram. Well, all right, I've got a force here. We'll call that the force from the professor. Well, it's 95 kilograms, but kilograms is a mass, it's not a force. So it's 95 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. I'll figure that out later. Okay. And let's replace those, those boundary conditions with two forces here. And I don't, we have to give them names. We could call them anything we want, but let's maybe call them A and B just because that's convenient. And if uh, it, it makes good subscripts. Boy, those are terrible. Let me fix that. And let me see if I can make this look better. Okay, be precise about your work. Go ahead and fix things like this. It's a good habit to get into. So now, I had to guess at the, at the dimension or the, the direction of that angle of that force there. Now, I had to guess at the direction of that force. I don't know what it is. I haven't done the analysis yet. So I'm going to go ahead and guess. If I'm wrong, force A, if I have it the wrong direction, I don't think I do. But if I do, force A will come out negative. That's perfectly fine. Nothing is wrong. It just means that my initial guess was the wrong direction. So the math will take care of you. Now, there's one more thing that's not on this free body diagram that's absolutely essential. Okay? And that's a positive sign convention. Right? I need to know what the positive directions are for this problem. So I'm going to call x positive, y, uh, po positive in the horizontal direction, y positive up, and the moment going from x to y. This is a right-hand coordinate system. You don't have to use this, but if you don't know what else to do, use this. Right? Remember, physics does not care about our coordinate system. Coordinate system is just for the accounting. Physics just works. We can use any coordinate system we want. As long as we execute the process correctly, we'll get the right answer. This makes the problem a little easier. Let me get this thing out of the way. Right? So now that's a free body diagram. That's what one looks like. I've got the diving board, this little you know, thin horizontal rectangle uh, drawn, and now I've simplified. I've cut it free. It's free of the, of the surrounding structure. I don't know what's going on below it. I don't know what the structure looks like. I only know that that structure exerts a force. In this case, it's called a reaction force on that. And there's another force there. These are the way, these two forces right here, are how the rest of the structure talks to the, to the diving board here. So this is a diagram only of the diving board and we account for the rest of the structure by this and by this. That's it. That's a free body diagram. Not so bad, huh? I was planning to stop right here. If I do, I bet the people who know the answer are going to be disappointed in me. I'm going to pause for a second, figure out what that is, and then let's go ahead and carry through the rest of the problem, okay? Okay, before I finish the problem, I should probably share with you that one of the, the fun little games I play in my life is tracking the number of hits my little YouTube channel gets. And as I'm doing this, we're getting close to about 7 million hits, which is about 6.99 million more than I thought I was ever going to get. But here we are. So this is fun. My daughter tells me that I'm going to get more hits on these videos if I include pictures of kittens. Well, who am I to argue with my daughter? So here you go. This is gumbo. Okay, with that out of the way, let's finish the problem. This turns out to be 931 point, let's see, make sure I get that right, 95 newtons. And we know that's two meters. Okay, between these two, we know that's three meters there. Now, you don't, you don't have to put dimensions on your uh, free body diagram, but you can if you want to. Um, I don't think the free body diagram police will object. So there's two equations we're going to write here. There's, no, hor there's no, no forces in the horizontal direction. So to solve the problem, we're going to sum the forces in the vertical direction, and we're also going to uh, calculate a moment about some point. 
So if I sum the forces in the y direction, and they have to equal zero. Remember, this is statics. If they don't equal zero, it's accelerating, and that's not statics. So F A is negative, F B is positive, and F P, the force of the professor, is also negative. Well, we can rearrange that and say that uh, F B minus F A equals FP. So what that means is the sum of those two forces has to equal the force of the professor. Well, that makes sense. Now, the thing I didn't put on here is the weight of the diving board. I could. For the time being, let's assume the weight of the diving board is so small it doesn't matter. Now, if your diving board is so heavy that it really does matter, you'll have to add some more forces on here to, or at least one more, to account for the weight of the diving board. For right now, let's not worry about that complication. So there's equation number one. In equation number two, we're going to have to solve the moments about some point. Well, I only get to sum the moment once, and I can sum about any point I want. Well, if I pick my points conveniently, I can get some stuff to drop out. So if I were to sum the moments about point A, the moment arm of this force acting at that point is zero, so that drops out. That gives me only one unknown. Well, one equation and one unknown, that sounds like a good idea. So let's sum the moments about point A. So FB is going to be 2 meters. This is a 2 meter distance here. It's not a very good 2. Let's try that again. That ah, looks better. Okay. This is not Bob Ross. I can't turn this into a bird. If we do that wrong, we really do need to erase it. Um, big fan of Bob Ross, by the way. Okay, so in the FB there. Now, is this positive or negative? FB is in a positive direction. Is it a positive moment? Well, about that point, FB wants to make this rotate counterclockwise. Well, I decided up here that counterclockwise is positive. So yes, that's a positive moment. This one is a negative force, and it turns out just because of the point about which I'm summing the moments, that makes the, the, uh, the, the FP makes the uh, uh, diving board want to rotate clockwise. Well, that's counter to my positive sign convention. Well, all right, let's just do this then. We decided that was 5 meters FP, and that all has to equal 0. Well, let's see. Do I know what that is? Yeah, that's a number. Do I know what that is? No, I don't. Do I know what that is? Yeah, that's a number. Do I know what that is? That's also a number. So, one equation, one unknown. Give me a second here. I'm running out of board space. I'm going to erase some stuff and we'll finish this up. All right, with the board cleaned up, let's go ahead and finish the solution. Now, there's our sum of forces in the y direction. There's our sum of moments. Now, this equation up here has two things we don't know. We don't know FB and we don't know FA. Darn it. This equation only has one thing we don't know. The only thing we don't know here is FB. So let's solve that second one first, substitute it in there, and then solve for FA. So if I want to solve this, it's pretty easy. I can say this. Just push the two over to the other side here. Oops. And I'll put in, uh, was it nine? Make sure I get that right, 931.95. That's FP there. Now I pulled the, the this two meters over here. And remember, I pulled the units over too. Always, always, always track your units. Your units give you a way of checking your answer. Don't ever throw away a good, a good opportunity to check an answer. So the units cancel out, leaving me with newtons. And 5 over 2 times 931.95 is 2329.88. So let's get that. 23, 29.88 newtons. And I'll get my head out of your way there. Okay, so there's one. We've got FB. The other thing we need to know now is FA. Well, how am I going to find that? Well, it's up there. Now that we know FB, let's, let's go over here. And we can say FA equals FB minus FP. That's all, all there is to it. So I worked that out, and I got 1397.93. Okay. That's it. So we've worked our way through a problem. We started with the working diagram, which again is often given to you in a book or in, in given to you by a professor. But after school, once you go out into the outside world, you've got to do those on your own. 
Then we did the free body diagram. We took the diving board, the structure we were interested in, it, cut it free from its supports, and replaced those supports with interface forces, FA and FB. And then we did equations of equilibrium to find FA and FB. So there you have it, nice little statics problem. I hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.